Hello and welcome back to the Razor Wire Reviews Master Quest. And uh, yeah, starting back up again. Back at the treehouse, yes. Whenever you save, it usually just takes you back to somewhere annoying. So uh, yeah, we're back, back for part two of this playthrough of the Ocarina of Time on the Nintendo 64, part two. I think I already said that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this is the Master Quest, if you didn't already know. Uh, Although that's not the Master Quest version of Ocarina of Time, it's my own personal Master Quest of trying to play through all of the Zelda games. And uh, yeah, the first part went, well, not well, but uh, I eventually managed to get all the footage to work and here we are with part two. And uh, I'm a lot more happy with how part two turned out. I've also used a different program to uh, rip the DVD that I used uh, to record the footage. And uh, it looks, a, I wouldn't say it looks a lot nicer, but there's no um, interlacing anymore, which is a big bonus because that really annoyed me. So yeah, we're now going to go over to Hyrule Castle and uh, continue on with the story of the game. But it looks like it's going to be getting dark, which is a problem. Because as soon as it gets dark, as soon as you hear that wolf howl, there's that gate there closing. <sighs> yes, yes, I know. And when it gets dark, these buggers come out. Big, goofy, skeleton guys. They're good for target practice, I guess. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. It's kind of annoying, really, but later on in the game, you uh, you find out... Um, or you can you can find a song that you can play, which will change it, change the time of day, so... I forget what it's called. Um, song of Sons, something like that. I don't know. I can't remember now. But, uh, you play, play a little song and it goes from night to day or day to night, depending on what you need. Uh, oh! <laughs> Walk around that ahead. And. There we go. <laughs> At this point, when you can't change it from night to day, it just gets a bit boring, and you're just waiting, waiting for the, the sun to come up. And I guess that's a that's a downside, I guess, but it adds to the realism of the whole thing, and just makes you feel just that a little bit more involved, if slightly annoyed at the fact that you can't get to, into the castle. So, it's starting to get a bit light now. We'll uh, be able to carry on with this. Walk like zombies as well, like zombie skeletons. Very strange. So here we go. We'll hear the chicken crow any second now. There we go. The chicken crow, did I just say that? <laughs> Over there's Lon Lon Ranch, where we'll be going later on. But for now, I'm gonna go on into the, uh, the, the town. The town, the market town, um, I'm not sure we'll see when we get there. What it says. First of all, we're going to go into uh, this little room here, and we're going to be able to some, collect a lot of rupees. What we'll need, we're going to have 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. This is always just really fun and satisfying to just smash up all the pots. Uh, yeah, this is a good place to just keep coming back and just. You know. Not a very good guard just standing there, just watching a little kid come in with a sword and shield just smash the whole place up. He's just like, yep, that's fine, by me. I'm getting paid here. Don't have to do anything. I think there's something in one of those boxes as well. Get all these. Oh, God. It's, this Nintendo 64 uh, controller is a little too sensitive at times. That's an annoying thing. It kind of makes me wish I was playing it on the GameCube. Ah, there we go. Gold Skulltula. Let's take out this sling shot. Pull the sword. Dun, 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 dun. I love that. Just. <laughs> sense of achievement comes from uh, that little tone. 
Man, I'm so bored. Things would sure be more interesting if there were more troubles in the world. Yeah, he's just telling me how to pick up Jaws. And clearly he did not give a shit about the fact that I came in. And <laughs> in fact, he was encouraging me to toss the Jaws around. <laughs> That's a uh, smart um, hiring. Hyrule, well done. Yeah. So we're going to go to the market now. Yeah, the market. <laughs> I wasn't sure if it was called like the town market or market town or. What a crazy guy! Can you believe this guy was crazy enough to try to sneak into the castle to see Princess Zelda? All because of this idiot. They tightened security at the castle. Wahahaha. <laughs> so strange. Huff, huff, I'm late, I'm late for a very important date. Ah, nice reference. So yeah, this is just a, again, just a fun thing really, where you can talk to people and feel involved. That's what you still got to say. You are so handsome, like the King of Hyrule. Hee <laughs> hee. Just spinning around like endlessly. So there's anything in these boxes now? No. Of course, we can go into the. And we can go into the buildings as well, that was another thing again when I first played this, I was just like, wow, you know, this is awesome, <laughs> I can go into shops, I can talk to people, I can walk around the town, and that's one of my, like, my, my, my main memories is just, like, that stuff, you know, the town, and uh, just exploring there, and a place that, that seems so full of life, and, uh, again, just opened up everything for me in terms of just games, and you know, what games meant, you know, the potion shop, yeah. I don't even know what I meant about what games meant then, <laughs> but you know, it, I guess it just kind of was like, okay, this is where games are going to be going in the future, you know, you're going to be able to feel this involved. And again, it, it, it had been done before this, you know, but it was my first experience with a game this immersive. Mm, the ultimate medicine. That's a side quest, I do believe. Maybe not. There's some side quest involving a potion, I think. And here we have the mask shop. Another side quest, if you choose to accept it. That's another cool thing. I mean, you don't have to do this mask, uh, the, the mask trading side quest at all. Um, but it's there if you want to. Uh, another awesome thing about Zelda. You always have these side quests that are pretty fun for the most part. And as you see, you can... Um, uh, lend the masks, pay back the money for the mask, and uh, yeah, it's just like a kind of um, bit of a business thing, I guess. <laughs> you can go into business for yourself. What a strange shop. But uh, I think we're gonna leave it at that. Oh no, I tell you, we'll have a look in here. No, box is just there for no reason. Okay, let's have a look in there anyway. Um, please, with C, sell me something. Please, with C. Sell me crack with a C. <laughs> Do you know about the Temple of Tar that we have in the northeast part of town? Legends say that the Temple of Time is the entrance to the Sacred Realm. Did you know that? I guess I do now. We're going here. I'll change your mind. I'm too bowling alley. Sleeping on the job. See these people in Hyrule just ridiculous. It's so lazy. Uh boo. Heal. Okay. I think we have to uh go and uh, go to the Death Mountain first and go visit the, the Gorons and get the bomb the bomb bag first, we can do the bomb tube, bowling alley, we'll just, uh, yeah, we'll head on up, Hyrule Castle, oh god, did I just see that, that owl on top of the tree then, I hope not, hi Link, this way, the princess is inside the castle just ahead, be careful not to get caught by the guards, Ho 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 hoot. Yeah, 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 okay. 
No, I do not want to hear what you said again. Ho! <laughs> yep, yeah, see ya. There's only one good thing he's... There's only one thing he's good for, and that's later on in the game. So, yeah. Always do this. Oh, there we go. Another gold skeleton. Always roll into trees, because um, more often than not, something will fall out. And sometimes it's something cool like this. You destroyed a gold skeleton. Yes, I did. Okay, now we've got to try and get into the castle without being seen by the guards. So, um, we'll just climb up these... Oh, come on. Just climb up these vines. And, uh, find a way around. That's a gossip stone, man. Again, they're another optional part of the game, I mean. Um, if you finish the mask, um, trading side quest, you get, um, I think the mask of, or the lens of truth, which allow you to, um, gain little tidbits of knowledge from the gossip stones, otherwise you don't get anything. So again, it's just another optional part of the game when those gossip stones are scattered throughout the whole game. So another just great thing about Zelda that I learned. And I got a feeling at some point in this playthrough I'm just going to run out of things to say. And I love this about Zelda. <laughs> it's, it's, it's new territory during these commentaries, but um... <laughs> it looks really funny when he's walking slow. It's like he needs to, needs to uh, have a piss. He's being very careful. <laughs> We can get to the Great Fairy through there. Not a dead end, as it would lead us to believe. But again, we need a bomb for that, so. Let's stick to the task at hand and try and uh, get into Hyrule Castle unseen. I can't quite remember how to do this. I remember getting caught a lot. So, hopefully. Okay, let's just check it out. Okay. It looks clear. Let's try it. <laughs> Are we gonna get past? I think we're good. I think we're good. Okay, let's get a bit faster. <laughs> Maybe it was just a lot easier than, <laughs> than I remembered. <laughs> I know you can climb up. Yeah, there we go. there's a wall there you can climb up. I'm just overly cautious because I don't want to get caught first off. And yeah, I think as long as you're not directly in their line of sight, then you're okay and they won't blow their whistle and kick you out. Let's climb up here. Another gossip stone. And uh, get onto the grounds of the castle. Not the grounds, but you know, inside the gate. The main part. We'll just uh, sneak down through the moat. That's not really a moat, is it? Really, there's a moat outside with the gate and stuff. But a little stream. And here we will meet um, a character who should be fast asleep. And I feel like I'm putting myself to sleep with this commentary. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> so this fat snoring uh, tub of lard is uh, mumble, mumble, mumble. Welcome, our ranch is so far. Okay, so it looks like we're going to have to try and wake him up somehow. I really cannot remember how. I should probably just read like, the strategy guide I have before I do these, uh, <laughs> these playthroughs. So I'm not wasting so much time. And I'm that lazy that I will just leave in all, all the things like this. Which also makes for more boring commentary, but there you go. So... Oh yeah, okay. Same thing. I think we have to go and find his daughter somehow. Nope, nothing there. Okay. I'll bloom rupee at least. Just get ourselves chucked out and uh, go back to the. Uh... Hey, you! Stop! You! Kid over there! <laughs> Kid over there. <laughs> right, okay. Back 
to the market. Two fans, yes, doors. Oh, shit. Yes. Okay. Hey, your clothes, they're different. You're not from around here, are you? No, I'm not. Oh, you're a fairy boy from the forest. My name is Malum, Malum, how do people say it? Dad went to the castle to deliver some milk and he hasn't come back yet. Hmm. I'm trying to think how to. <laughs> I'm sure she gives me an egg um, of some sort. Uh, let's go back. Um, if I talk to her again, maybe. I don't want to go too far out of my way and just you know, make this too long. Are you going to the castle, fairy boy? Would you mind finding my dad? Yes, I would. Definitely not mind finding a dad because that'll progress the story. Um, what a thing for an adult to do. Again, falling asleep on the job is it's a running thing in Hyrule. People not being bothered. Uh, here you go, we got a weird, a weird, you got a weird egg. But people not being bothered about a kid coming in and smashing up the jars in the little room next to the gate, the gate room. Uh, you got someone just asleep on the job in the bowling alley. We got a milkman asleep, like not even sleeping like on his desk, but just sleeping in the castle grounds. <laughs> it's madness, I tell you. All right, let's do this again. Uh, I'm just I'll do this a bit quickly now because uh, I know it's a lot easier than I remembered. I'll just jump down here. And away we go. Okay. I'd... Still going to be somewhat cautious though. I don't want to just try and... Uh... You know when, you, when you've done something in the game and you're like, uh, oh, I know how to do that, and then you just rush it and then you fail. And then you get angry, so you, you try and do it again and you're a bit stressed out. And because of that you fail again. <laughs> And then you just get really angry and you can't do it and start overcompensating and yeah. That's more in like simpler games so <laughs> like uh, you know like Sonic and stuff. Um Okay, let's do this again. Back in the stream. What if I get more rupees? Yes, yeah, nice. Need them rupees. Can buy the Hylian shield. This deco shield is not going to hold up much longer. I tell you. Um, well, I, I actually, it does hold up, but um, and in some ways, I prefer the deco shield because you can actually hold it in front of you, at least when you're um, the child. Like, what do I mean by child? Like, I hear you uh, asking. <laughs> oh well, you wouldn't know anything about that because this this is a game that not many people have played. But yeah. Trying to present him with this egg. Looks like this item doesn't work here. Okay. I think I just have to wait for it to hatch. Great. <laughs> uh, yeah. But yeah, the deck of shield, I mean, you can hold it in front of you when you're a child link. When you're adult link, you can hold the Hylian shield, shield in front of you. When you get the Hylian shield when you're the child link, you kind of just kind of duck down and you just act like a little turtle. So you can't like reflect stuff. Not that you need to do that much in the game, just with the deco shrubs and stuff, but it's still handy and it just feels more cool to hold it in front of you, you know. Instead of just like ducking down like a little coward and just being like, oh, don't hurt me, I'm a little turtle. And um Yeah, I'll just move these boxes. All these crates, um over a bit so that uh, they're ready. Just play around with the ocarina. Out of tune. What? I'm so bored. 
<laughs> Come on, chicken. Oh, yeah. Song of Time. With the Temple of Time theme. Whatever you want to call it. I just remembered it from memory. Yeah. Although it's not exactly that complicated when you've got like four buttons. Yeah. And there's not many times in the game where you have to wait around like this that much. Yeah. I mean, I'm hoping I have to wait for the chicken to hatch. I'm hoping there's nothing I've forgotten I have to do. <laughs> yeah. Walking round, walking round. Boom. That was not satisfying. Oh, a little heart. I'll take that. Nice. Need them hearts. Come on, chicken. Nice. 60 rupees. Forgot how much the Highland Shield was. I think it was 80 rupees. I'm gonna get that as soon as possible. Because it's awesome. Yay, there we go. Look, a chicken hatched from the egg you were incubating. I was incubating it? <laughs> I thought I was just holding it. What in tarnation? Can a person get a little shut eye around here? Yeah, apparently. While on the job as well. Hello, who might you be? Yep, I'm Talon, the owner of Long Long Ranch. I went to the castle to deliver some milk, but I sat down here on my fat ass to rest, and I guess I damn come fell asleep. Yeah, your daughter's looking for you, so, you know, you've left her outside all night. You're a terrible father. Yeah, she really is gonna let you. <laughs> Yeah. I've never seen anyone run like that before, but if I did, it would be hilarious. Okay, I don't want to do it with the chicken, so let's just, uh, let's do this. And get inside the castle. Oh, I hate that when you try to grab it and you end up climbing on top of the crate. Instead of pushing it, so we're pulling it to I believe those are the same crates in Lon Lon Ranch. Interesting. Uh, that is actually such a pointless piece of information. <laughs> if it even is information, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Yeah. Right. Push this one. We will have a, uh, a nice little path to that little gap there where we have to climb into and infiltrate the castle. I don't know, I guess we just, we just do, it, do it that way then. Okay. Uh, try the force there. It's always, always somewhere. Go for try the force. Just the design, so simple. Awesome. Right, here we are, the castle courtyard. Let's do this. So what we gotta do here? Oh, my chair is squeaking. Sorry about that. Um, what we gotta do here is just make sure we don't get caught. Otherwise, we're back to square effing one. Yeah. And again, like I said, as long as we're out of the um, the eye line of the guards, then we're good to go. And I remember, I remember messing this one up a lot. Although I think when you get caught, I think you're just thrown out to um the area where uh, Talon was, so... Now you don't have to go <laughs> back all the way up to the, uh, the castle again. Ooh. Always stresses me out. There we go. Like a glove. Those rupees uh, really entice you to, <laughs> to actually go down and um, Risk it, but uh, this one's pretty easy. You just walk across the top of the beam, and uh, that is that. Ah! Oh god! Uh, 
Okay. <laughs> Maybe I will get the rupees. This bloody Nintendo 64 controller is too sensitive to what, we, to what I'm used to. That's okay. Another Triforcer. I wonder how many Triforcers are like actually in this game. Like not in the cutscenes and stuff, but just like on the you know like the the backgrounds and the all the all the objects and stuff. Turn around. God, this one's gonna come. Okay, we're gonna. Yes. Okay. I think it's just this last bit now. I'm gonna go for it. Ooh. Slowly does it. Oh god, oh god, oh god. He definitely looked at me then. I don't know, I got away with that. Okay, <laughs> cool. We are through to this part of the game. The castle courtyard. Uh, well, we, we just were in the castle courtyard, but this is the a nice area with Zelda's lullaby, which is a beautiful piece of music, in my opinion. Um, let's see if I can find something here. I think it's the other window. But yeah, the music in Zelda is just fantastic. Um, ah, here we go. Yeah. I mean, I was looking on YouTube the other day just for cover songs and stuff, and people just transpose the music, and it's just Fantastic. Can we see him there? There we go, it's Bowser. <laughs> Bowser and Mario. So we'll see the, um, the rulers of Hyrule, the big Super Mario 64 fans. And who's this? Who's this little person here? Who? Who are you? How'd you get past the guards? Oh, it was, you know, no big deal. It's no thing. Is that... A fairy, you faggot? <laughs> you wouldn't just happen to have the spiritual stone in the forest, would you? That green and shining stone? Wow, she really wants me to have that spiritual stone. Yeah, I got it. Wow. <laughs> but in all seriousness, you know, I like these little cutscenes. I had a dream, and in the dream, dark storm clouds. Blah, blah, blah. See, I don't know if these, um, the cutscenes, like the text and stuff, I don't know if they were just written in Japanese originally, um, because it's a Japanese game, or if, um, I don't know what that, I, I can't think that they would be, like, um, just translated as they were. I don't know if they had, like, another writer kind of shape it and mold it and stuff. I have to look that up. But I think it's very well written, actually. I am Zelda, Princess of Hyrule. The reason we're all here, yes. What is your name? <laughs> Link. I remember when it said Luke and I was like, Oh my god, I'm in the game! This is amazing! <laughs> Strange, it sounds somehow familiar. And again, I was like, Oh god, this is so cool. <laughs> and I felt like I was. Link, you know, or I felt like he was Luke, he was me, I felt like, yeah, like I was really a part of it, awesome. The legend goes like this, and now we're going to get the full, well not the full story, but more of the story than we've already had. The three goddesses we've heard of before hit the Triforce containing the power of the gods somewhere in Hyrule. The 
power to grant the wish of the one who holds the Triforce in his hands. Or her hands. Let's not be sexist. If someone with a righteous heart makes a wish, it will lead Hyrule to a golden age of prosperity. If someone with an evil mind has his wish granted, the world will be consumed by evil. That is what I've been told. So, the ancient sages built the Temple of Time to protect the Triforce from evil ones. the Triforce. That's right, the Temple of Time is the entrance through which you can enter the sacred realm from our world. But the entrance is sealed with a stone wall called the Door of Time, believe it or not. And in order to open the door, it is said that you need to collect three spiritual stones. Another thing you need is the treasure that the royal family keeps along with this legend. The Ocarina of Time. There's another Triforce. Want to address? Did you understand well the story I just told you? Hmm. <laughs> yes, I did. I was spying through this window just now. The dark clouds. Nah, I'm good. <laughs> Alright. So I guess it doesn't really matter <laughs> whatever you say. Pardon me. There he is. The man with the evil eyes. Ganondorf. The villain of the story. The leader of the Gerudos. Though he swears allegiance to my father, I'm sure he is not sincere. Slimy bastard. He symbolizes the dark clouds. Um, no, he didn't see me. It's fine. <laughs> ah. Yet. <laughs> yes. Hmm. I told my father about my dream. However, he didn't believe it was a prophecy. But I can sense that man's evil intentions. There's another Triforce. What Ganondorf is after must be nothing less than the Triforce of the Sacred Realm. He must have come to Hyrule to obtain it. And he wants to conquer Hyrule. No, the entire world. Link, now, we are the only ones who can protect Hyrule. <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> How could I say I don't believe you with a face that cute? Ganondorf has a terrifying power, that is true. But we're gonna stop that, yeah. In this Master Quest, we're gonna stop the evil Ganondorf from taking over Hyrule, no the world. So, we we'll have to find the other two spiritual stones, that's our current mission uh, statement. To get the Triforce before Ganondorf gets his dirty, grubby, sand-ridden hands all over them. We now have the uh, the Zelda's letter that will give us a bit of pull when we're uh, wandering around Hyrule. It looks just a letter from Zelda, no big deal, you know, just friends with the royal family, no thing. All right then, let's, uh, let's get out of here. But who's this? I mean, compared to the graphics of today, it's, you know, it doesn't look that great, but still holds up to me just because the story's so good and the atmosphere, the music and everything, it's just fantastic. Impa of the Sheikahs. A big new adventure, yes, that is correct. So, we're going to learn a little song here. A melody passed down by the royal family. 
that Impa played the Princess Zelda ever since she was a baby as a lullaby. I used to play Zelda's lullaby on the guitar all the time. I actually played it a couple of times while my fiance was going to sleep. I can't play it very well, but uh, you know. I mean, I can play it well, but I can't do like the whole uh, like you see some people on YouTube who um, make proper covers. Like they really just make it like a proper awesome piece, whether it be on guitar or the ocarina, or whatever. Yeah, that was with feeling, yeah. I like that. I like that you can hold it down to make the note a bit longer and Although by the end of it you're just like, oh left up right, left up right, what's going on with it? And again, it's a very simple thing, like you know, up uh, de uh left up down, left up down. And um you've played a song, you know, and again back as a kid it's like, wow, I just played a song, I learned a song. And it's so simple that you remember it, then you don't have to keep going back and checking. You just feel like, you know, again, like you're a part of it. And I'm really, really hammering that point home, but that's, uh, that's the best thing about the game. I love this theme. It's like, off for an adventure, you know. Death Mountain. Oh, I remember when I saw that mountain, when I first got into the Hyrule Field, and I was like, oh, that's awesome. That would be really cool if you could actually go there. And you do, and it's awesome. Death Mountain, home of the Gorons, and they hold the spiritual stone of fire, which will be our next, uh, um, what's the word? I was going to say acquiration, but that is not a word at all. It'll be the next stone that we acquire, let's put it that way. we go to Kakariko Village, at the summit, uh, not the summit, um, <laughs> at, the, uh, at the bottom of Death Mountain. The song I just taught you has some, some mysterious power. Only Royal Family members learn this song. It'll improve the connection with the Royal Family, and the Princess is waiting for you to return to the castle with these stones. Alright, so we're counting on you. I bet you are. So long as Zelda's gonna actually go for us and do anything, so I guess it's up to me. And Navi. The Navi. <laughs> Okay, so um, I actually cut it there, so that, uh, that's why it's getting dark quite quickly. So, and I guess you're probably thinking, well, if you can cut it, then why are you not? Why are you just like, I don't know. Well, there's a lot of time wasted in this. Like, I think we're just walking around like this, or in part one when I kind of just did the whole same thing all over again in the decoratory dungeon. Which I easily could have edited, but I decided not to, to be true to the playthrough. Which is a stupid notion, really, but anyway. I wanted to do it. I wanted it to be authentic. But, um, no, I just, um, I stopped the DVD recorder at that point so that it was getting close to night time, which it now is in Kakariko Village, the first time we see it. This is another example of feeling a part of the game, feeling a part of the story where you're in a village. It's very much alive and breathing, and there's people you can talk to, and buildings you can go inside, little side quests that you can do, and we got this weird, weird guy who looks like the Elephant Man sitting outside, and we have another Gold Skulltula to collect. Speaking of Gold Skulltula, uh, that building right in front of us, I believe, is the House of Skulltula. Um, so, let's have a look inside this building, I think. Nothing in there. Yeah, well, uh, I'll show you the house of Skulltula now. I like the music here, it's quite atmospheric. What the f in hell. That is creepy. <laughs> we all look like this because the spider's curse. Every spider look. So yeah, um, he just br briefly explains the, the curse. <laughs> look for them not only in the open but in dungeons as well. Of course, this is just a dream. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. If you break the curse on my family, we'll make you very rich. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> again, 
slightly bored, so I'm just entertaining myself. Yeah, I'm cursed. I'm cursed, man. So we got uh, the main one in the middle. We got little ones here. I believe every time you get ten uh, gold skulltulas, you can go and um, uh, I think every ten, one of the little spider boys will be like a real boy. I'm a real boy, and uh, I think it's a hundred gold skulltulas to get the to get them all back to normal, including the main guy in the middle. It is the first time I visited this village. Oh, yeah, I think I know who that is. <laughs> he looks special. Ah, so you can find out what time it is. It's 8 o'clock. <laughs> so you got some fat boys there waiting for food. At least they actually do some work in Kakariko Village, no sleep on the job, and you know, let kids throw pots around. So we're gonna go up to Death Mountain now. Try the box. Nope, nothing. Okay. Um, I'm still debating on you know, again how much of this game I'm gonna play through, apart from the main story. Um, obviously, I'm collecting the gold skulls as I go, but you know. Will I get all of them? I don't know. I don't know. You can hear one now. I think there's one up on this ladder. Maybe. Yeah. So, you know, while I'm here, when in Rome, let's, uh, let's get it. See, so, yeah, I, I don't know about the, the side quests and stuff. Um. Like the 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 big the big Goron sword, um, the tr the trading one, uh, this one the, the gold gold to left side quest, the mask trading quest. I just I don't know. Just ignore Navi. Whenever she's like, listen, just listen and then close it. <laughs> I want to jump off. I guess not. <laughs> See, if I jumped off like a 50 foot tower and all I did was just go, that'd be pretty cool. Alright. The road is closed beyond this point. Can't you read the sign over there? You're just a kid. You can't read yet. <laughs> okay, so I have to show him the letter and be like, check this out. I'm going to drop this on you right now. This is this this is surely Princess Zelda's handwriting. Well, let's see now. Hmm, okay, this is Link. He was under my orders to save Hyrule. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is a bit far fetched. I think Zelda should have worded that a little bit differently. Just be careful, Mr. Hero. Oh, well, it got us through the gate. That's the main thing. Even if the guard is a sarcastic twat. By the way, Mr. Hero, if you're going to climb Death Mountain, you should equip a proper shield. It is an active volcano, after all. Hmm. If you go back to Hyrule Castle Town Market, you should check out the bazaar. They sell the shield you need there. Tell them I sent you, and they should give you a special discount. Oh, interesting. He suddenly turned out to be quite a nice guy. If you think you're good to go... I'd like to ask a favor of you. No, I don't expect you to do it just because of the great tip I just gave you. I'm just asking. Have you been to the Happy Mask shop that just opened in the Hyrule Castle Town Market? Yes, I have, but it's shut. So I don't know why you're saying everyone's talking about it. My little boy presses me for a popular mask, but I don't have time to go there. So, could you go and get the mask for me next time you are in the market? If you don't feel like it, that's okay. But... Well, I have no choice. This is my job. Well, I admire the fact that you're actually doing your job, unlike some people, so I'll think about it. And you did offer me a discount. Or at least 
the promise of a discount. We'll see if that comes into fruition later on. I think we'll be okay without the high roll, uh, the high lane shield for now. So yeah, the Death Mountain Trail. So now this is another cool thing that to get to the top of the mountain, I mean, you literally have to walk out of the mountain, you know, um, which is kind of cool, and it's not overdone as well. It doesn't take you too long to get up there, so I appreciate that. Really. I'll just leave these guys. Here. I guess it's fun to pick them off now, but you just feel like you know, just run around them. <laughs> There's a gold sculptor in there, I think. Not on the wall, oh, not on the wall, not on the cliff. Okay, we'll come back and get that later on. Ugh, I hate those things. It's now morning. And this is our first look at a Goron. I am one of the Gorons, the stone-eating people who live on Death Mountain. Look at that huge boulder over there. It blocks the entrance to Dodongo's cavern, which was once a very important place for us Gorons. One day, many Dodongos suddenly appeared inside the cavern and became a very dangerous place. On top of that, a Gerudo in black armor used his magic to seal the entrance with that boulder. If you want to hear more Goron gossip, head up to our city. Goron City is just a little way up the trail. It won't take much longer to get there, even on foot. I don't know what that accent was, I'm sorry. But, uh, you know, it gets me through it. <laughs> so, the Dodongo's cavern has been blocked, and we hear again about the Gerudo man. We now know is Ganondorf, that slimy bastard from Hyrule Castle. He's trying to uh, weasel his way into getting the Triforce. Or so Zelda has told us. I mean, she could be lying. Maybe she's the villain. Who knows? That'd be a turn for the books, wouldn't it? So this is the entrance to the Goron City. I love the Goron City, like music, the theme. Um, it was always one of my favorite like uh, tracks. I remember like back in the day, um, I'm just going to go into a little story here, um, you could download music um, illegally on a program called WinMX, anyone, does anyone remember that? That's a really weird thing, I guess it was kind of like the precursor to torrents and stuff, and uh, I remember trying to download, um, <laughs> God. so he's going to moan now about the fact that you can't have the proper rocks. Everyone feels faint from hunger. We're not going to do that anymore. <laughs> it's all because we can't enter our quarry, the Dodongo's cavern. We Gorons live on a diet of rocks. There's rocks everywhere. The most delicious and nutritious rocks around are found in Dodongo's cavern. That seems like ancient history now. We've become such gourmets that we can't stand to eat rocks from anywhere else. I'll grow up. Sigh. I just want to eat the top sirloin rocks from the Dodongo's cavern. Well, tough shit, at least you're not starving. Um, yeah, Winamax. I managed to download like um, a couple of Zelda tracks, not the full album that you can find anywhere, but... And I was just amazed, I was like, oh my god, I've downloaded a, a Zelda song, this is awesome. And uh, one of them was Go and See, I just love it. <laughs> you're standing on a soft carpet. I wonder if they're coming to play later on. And I remember this, that uh, he's supposed to play the uh, Zelda's lullaby. And of course we've been told this, that it will help us, so... So there we go. Oh, that always surprises me, I always think that it's gonna, you know, um, load, but it ends up just, you end up going straight into the room. What the heck? Who are you? When I heard the song of the royal family, I expected their messenger had arrived, but you're just a little kid. And my accent, as Darunia, the big boss of the Gorons, has really lost so much status to be treated like this by a sworn brother of the king. I'm sorry, that was a mess. Uh, okay. Are you asking why I'm in such a bad mood right now? So he's, he's pretty pissed off by the Dodongos as well. Starvation and hunger, dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria. 
Oh, okay. So I have to show him the song. Again. Well, we show him the song for the first time, but we're playing it for the second time in as many minutes. Oh. Oh, what? <laughs> I don't remember. Another Triforce. I like that as well. I like this like a little Triforce kind of just hanging on the ceiling, like a really ancient kind of... It's awesome. I just love like the, the, the history as well. They kind of work into things. Okay, he's tapping his foot like Sonic, and he is not impressed. Um, he wants something green, natural. Something he can dance to. Yes, that's right. We're going to have to now go back to the Kakiri Forest to learn another song, because that fat Goron um, is not content with Zelda's lullaby. He wants something a little more kicking. He wants something a little bit more groovy that he can dance to before we can um, progress any further in the game. Yes, can you be he -le -he bit? This is always one of the most frustrating things for me because it just it's a lot of walking basically. Um, yeah. I always wonder like how did I even figure out how to do this when I was a kid? I, I guess when he says green and natural, you, your natural instinct is to go back to the Kakiri forest and explore, you know. Because as of now, all we've been to is um, the, you know, the Hyrule, uh, you know, the market and stuff. Uh, the forest where we started off. And uh, Death Mountain, Kakariku Village. So The main one that's green is the forest, so that's where we would go. But uh, as you'll find out when we get there, it's still a little bit, you know, it's not that black and white as to where you're supposed to go for this part of the game. I always remember this. You have to backflip over this. What? <laughs> and we're now on top of Dodongo's Cap and where we can find the first piece of heart that we have found so far. So uh, we if we collect four of these heart pieces, um, or pieces of heart, sorry, um, then we get a heart piece. A heart container. Um, and whenever you beat a boss, you get a full heart um, container. But these extra ones that, again, you don't really need to get if you don't want to, but um, in fact, you don't even need to get the ones that you get for beating the bosses if you don't want to. It is entirely possible to complete this whole game with three hearts. But, um, yeah, the heart pieces are, you know, another kind of optional thing, but it's always a good idea to do to, do, to find them and figure out where they are and solve puzzles and stuff. Another fantastic thing about this awesome, awesome game. Um, I read that this game in 2008 and 2010, um, according to the Guinness World Records, uh, was the highest rated game ever. So yeah, this is always fun, just pick up a chicken and glide <laughs> off a ledge. You can actually, um, you can slice those chickens with your sword, and if you do it like around, I don't know, six, seven, eight times. <laughs> it just kind of zooms in on the, the chicken, and it's the chicken sees red. It's like a Kill Bill moment, and then all the chickens just start attacking you. It's awesome. Um, well, it's not awesome attacking an animal. It's, uh, it's just funny. <laughs> the chickens are just like, screw this, we're going to just kill this guy. <laughs> and here we go. Um, back to where we started. And let's try this tree for the hell of it. See if we get anything from this. Hey, some deco nuts, which I was already maxed out. Awesome. So, yeah. We're gonna go learn another song for Darunia. But yeah, just the, the walking around and stuff is like. Uh, I'll go here first while we're here, while we're close enough. Kind of save down on the walking back and forth. Go back in this room and uh, rinse, rinse the rupees. And now we have 83, 85, 87, 88, 
88 miles per hour. We have enough rupees to go and get the Hylian Shield. In fact, we will now be maxed out any second now. 95, 96, 99. There we go. Let's get the out of here. And get that Hylian Shield. I, just, I love the Hylian Shield. I'd love to have an actual replica of it. It's such a cool design. Uh, the staple of any Zelda game. And it makes up, of course, the classic logo on the front of the, the box or the cartridge. And, you know, it's awesome. In fact, you'll be able to see it on the right of this video, uh, quite small, on the, uh, the right hand side. There we go. Doesn't look quite as cool in the game as it does in the cover, but it's uh, awesome. Hylian Shield, yes. Nope, I'm good. Oh, 59 rupees. Okay, so that cost me. Let's see how good my math is after all these years. 40? Wow, okay. So that was half price. Awesome. <laughs> I did not remember that. Or maybe I didn't do it before. <laughs> that guy is weird. Who. If anyone had a face like that constantly and ask you, would you like to be a happiness salesman? <laughs> I'll lend you a mask, you sell the mask, and bring the money back to me. Yeah, that, that would weird me out if that was a real person. That's all I'm saying. You know, you know what I'm saying. So let's get a mask while we're here as well. We'll get the key and mask. Seems we got a nice little uh, half price discount on the Hylian Shield. We'll do the guy a favor and uh, get him the mask that his kid wants. You'll be a popular guy with that mask on. I think when you wear the mask, you get like different responses from people and stuff. Um, and there you go, you can just stick it on whatever you want, really, once you've got it equipped on one of the C buttons. So, uh, let's equip the shield. Yeah, awesome. See what I mean about the turtle thing? <laughs> I kind of like it though, I kind of like the shield is like pretty much as big as his whole body. <laughs> it's kind of badass. So now we're gonna go and finally find this stupid song. Alright, it's about to get dark, so I'm gonna have to dodge some of these <coughs> zombie skeletons. Zealotons. <coughs> Scombies. <laughs> See the the the, the was that the moon or the sun kind of rising there? Well, it'd be the moon, of course. It was the moon rising. Okay. And you can always kind of check on that if you want to see like exactly when the you know the the sun is going to come up or go down or whatever. Um, up until the point where you get the song where you can change the weather and not the weather you can change the time of day, and it's. Uh, Pretty irrelevant then. The road goes ever on and on, down from the door where it began. Yes. I'm currently recording this commentary on the 15th of December 2012, and The Hobbit was just released. That's why I had that little song in my head. Even though that song is from Lord of the Rings. I think. I'm not entirely sure. It's been a while since I read the books. Anyway, got Hobbit on the mind. Haven't seen it yet, though. So here we go. I know where to go, obviously, because uh, I've done this before. And uh, Kiri Forest, if we just go to the left up there, as you can see, there's um, some platforms. And I guess um, you could go there at the beginning of the game. I'm assuming, and if you, uh, and I definitely checked it out when I first played the game, because as I said in part one, I thought that this was like one of the main sections of the game, I, I did not realise in any way, shape or form, the scope of this game, um, and you know, compared to, to games nowadays, it's, you know, it's not mental, but it's a pretty big game for its time, 
I think it was the biggest Nintendo cartridge um, ever in terms of storage space and stuff. Uh, the trick here in the Lost Woods is because uh, if you go into the wrong trunk, it'll take you back to the beginning. You can kind of tell it's it's blacker than the others. This owl does my head in. But yeah, if you if you look closely, like the one that will send you back to the beginning, let's just skip this. The one that will send you back to the beginning kind of has a bit of like a a tint to it. It's not completely pitch black. Um, and if not, you just follow the music. You just you know, if you can't hear the music when you get close to the, the trunk, then just don't go in. Which I never knew. I, when I first played it again, I was just like. I was just guessing, and uh, I was like, and then, I, then I tried kind of getting a, I think I had like a pen and paper and I was trying to note down which turns to take, I think that's how I finally did it. So you can see there's like a tint, like a white kind of thing. Yeah, don't go down that way. But this took me so long and then finally I managed to do it and I was very happy. <laughs> Nope. No. Oh yeah. Of course, it was. Uh, as you can still hear the music. I think that's where I got stuck a lot, actually, because the last one is not completely pitch black, and you don't just simply walk through it. It uh, loads the game up again. Just not gonna fight this. This piece of work here. And this is cool. Like the combat is cool as well. You can really kind of. Be strategic and stuff, and kind of like jump back, jump to the left, jump to the right, bring your shield out, get your slingshot out, you can kind of stab forward, you can do a spin attack, you can do the diving attack. And there we go. Just kind of just blast my way through this maze now. I really just want to uh, get, get into the. Uh, the Dongo's cavern, get on with it, you know. Ugh. So I wish I had the Deco Shield. Well, wish I had. I do have the Deco Shield, I just can't be bothered to press start and equip it and then unequip it and you know, just blast through it. It's so satisfying when you come back the other way where you can just, um. You can climb up a ladder and just, um jump over all the, the, uh, the top sections. <laughs> it's a lot quicker. <laughs> Put it that way. And there we go. Oh god. Low on health. Alright. Now we find a familiar face. I really just I don't know how I even approach pronouncing a name, but uh, Saria is sat there on the, the tree stump. And she's the one who's been playing the music. Maybe we will learn this song. Oh, there's a Triforce. Just saying. I'm waiting for you, Link. This is the sacred forest meadow. It's my secret place. I feel this place will be very important for both of us. And here we are. Yes. I don't know what to say. Um, Impa said that the spiritual stone of fire is somewhere near Death Mountain. Yes, I know. Um, apologies there. Basically what happened was, um, my DVD recorder fucked up big time. Um, and I basically lost the, uh, the little exchange there between Link and, uh, Surya. Which is a real shame, because I, I really didn't want this to be incomplete, but I guess it'll have to be for now. I was considering just, um, like, downloading the, the scene from YouTube and inserting it, but I didn't want to do that or, you know, rip off anyone else's playthrough, so... Um, she basically said that, um... Uh, this is a grotto, a hidden grotto, by the way. There's a lot of these hidden throughout the game. Um, they have different things in them, and this one has a fairy fountain, which will relieve you of uh, health. So there you go. Back up to four. 
Yeah, um, I didn't want to do that, so we'll just carry on. Um, for me to have gone back and uh, played through, I'd have to play through another hour's worth of game just to get back to that cutscene. I really didn't want to do that, so yeah. I'll try and be more careful in the future where I save and stuff, but the DVD recorder is so temperamental, so I'm sorry about that. As you can see, there's um, two gossip stones there. Yeah. Remember what I said earlier? Yeah. Um, yeah, that was a lot easier to just <laughs> run over the tops of the uh, the top of the maze there. No, uh, and Surya also, um, she. Well, it seems weird to say weird to say that because I was just sort of a Sarah. I don't know. Anyway. Did you learn an ocarina song? Yes, how did you know? Probably because you were sat on a fucking perch watching us the whole time, you creepy pervert. Um, yes. Uh, she taught us um, her song, and uh, that song will go on to, uh, hopefully, uh, light a fire in Darunia, and he'll uh, give us the stone. That's what we need right now. And it's been a wild goose chase so far. So let's get back up to Death Mountain as quickly as we possibly can. Spin attack. And this is what would have happened earlier. It, it would just take us right back out to the forest. And boom! Let's grab that rupee. Why not? In fact, I'm going to try and find a gold skull to the well here. I'm pretty sure there's one around the back of that one of these houses at night time. So, uh, it'll make me feel more better about the fact that we had to walk all the way here. If we get like another little bonus up there, maybe no. The thing with the gold sculptures as well is you can hear them as well, which is very handy. So can't hear anything. I'm sure there's one up there in a house somewhere. Ugh. Let's just leave it. <laughs> I don't want to waste too much time. Okay. On the road again. Off we go. Yeah, so, uh. Now I really have run out of things to say. Um, but we're nearing the end of this now. I'm gonna call it a day. Um, as soon as we've gone back up to uh, Death Mountain. So there's not much else to do but just walk there. Um, so, let's think of something to talk about. Because uh, I can't just say, okay, we're just going there. Still going there. We're just following the path. Still on the path. Still on the yellow brick road. Did you ever wonder where the red brick road went? You know, in the Wizard of Oz, where it kind of spirals out the yellow brick road and then in between the yellow bricks is a red brick so also spin out to another path I wonder where the red brick road leads interesting I wonder this is annoying as well you can't just go straight there you gotta go all the way down here and cross the bridge just to make it just that little bit longer um, and of course there's more of a sense of wonder the first time you play it so you don't mind as much but when you've played through it so many times you're like, come on, let's get to it, you know, let's get to the dungeons. So, yeah. I'm enjoying this, you know, I'm enjoying playing through it and the process of recording these commentary and stuff. And now, as of uh, me recording this commentary, the first part is up, my introduction is up. Um, so go check out the introduction video if you haven't so far. And part one, if you haven't checked that, check that out so far. I know it's long, but um, yeah, I explained in part one that, um, or in my introduction, I can't remember that I just I didn't want to do short parts and lots of them. I'd rather have, you know, a fair amount of long ones as opposed to a huge amount of short ones. And uh, just before we go up to Death Mountain, we'll give this uh, we'll give this guard the the key and mask. Actually, no. We'll, uh, we'll put it on and I'll speak to him. Key something? Character mask? No, it's a Keaton mask. I always used to think of Batman because, of course, Michael Keaton played Batman. 
I was a big, big Batman fan when I was a kid. Still am. Um, I was a big Michael Keaton Batman fan. Still am. And uh, Michael Keaton plays Batman who wears a mask. So every time I saw the, the Keaton mask, I was like, I'm Batman. So we just sold the 10 rupee mask for 15 rupees. So let's go back and... No, let's not do that. <laughs> we'll do that later. So we made like a nice little 5 rupee profit there. Last of the big spenders. That will really come in useful. Not... And I just run around these. Forget about them. I have not got the time. See ya! <laughs> See, that's the thing again, like, I love audio commentaries, like, say, on, like, uh, films and stuff. I always think I'd be really good at doing that. If I ever made like a, a good film or something, I'd be really good at doing the audio commentary. Because there'd be so much to talk about, you know, every shot is there's a story to tell. But when you're doing like hours and hours worth of commentary on games like this, I think it's tough. Um, and I now have a lot more respect for people who do it. Um, especially in the, you know, the people who do like proper, like big, long playthroughs and commentaries and stuff. Um, it's tough, you know. Um, Although I think, you know, again, I mentioned in my introduction, some people are quite obnoxious with the way they do it, and they're always trying to be funny, and they're trying too hard sometimes, and I don't want to do that, I don't want to try too hard. If I feel like saying to you, like, oh, I'm boring myself, or I don't know what I'm talking about, then I'll just say that. <laughs> what the hell, you know, I'm not going to try and be perfect with this. So this is the, uh, this is the song. Down right up, down right up. Saraya's song. Saraya? Saraya's song. Wow, he really, like. Whoa, okay. <laughs> Whoa, there. Easy now. Okay, he's going mental. He is loving it. I mean, it's not even like a kind of a. Uh, I guess it's kind of like a jaunty tune, I guess. But... Oh! Oh, oh! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! What? What a hot beat! <laughs> wow! Whoa, funky! Looking Dutch camera angle there, Yahoo! Remember when Yahoo was like the only search engine ever. Okay, just like that, my depression is all gone. Something just came over me. I <laughs> suddenly Okay, um, easy there. I am Darunia, I am the big boss of the Gorons. Was there something you wanted to ask me about? Yeah, about two days ago when I came up. You want the Spirit of Stone of Fire too? Yes, please. I've been through a lot of trouble. Just hand it over. Also known as the Gorons Ruby. Okay, fine. I don't care what, what you call it. Just give it to me. Please. Thank you. Ugh, oh, why don't you go destroy the monster inside of Dodongo's cavern and prove you're a real man? That way everybody will be happy again. If you do it, I will give you anything you want, even the spiritual stone. I have something for you. I'm not really giving you this in return for anything, but take it anyway. If you wear this, even a little fella like you can pick a bomb flower using A. Well, thank you very much. We now have the Goron's bracelets, which means we can pick up bombs and throw them around and blow shit up, so that is cool. But uh, annoying that after all that trouble, he's not going to hand over the stone. He wants us to uh, do his dirty work for him. I mean, he's, he is massive. Why doesn't he go down there and sort them out? I mean, he can pick up bombs, he can blow up the entrance to Dodongo's cavern, he can go inside, he can do the dungeon himself, he'll be a lot better at it, because he's huge, he's massive, he'll be able to beat up enemies a lot better than I am, because I am just a kid. I mean, what, what an insensitive, callous bastard to send off a child to fight, you know, fire-breathing, exploding Dodongos. Unbelievable, we're gonna do it anyway because we really need that spiritual stone, otherwise Gandalf will take over. Just got a quick look around here and if 
fact. Um, I'm going to try and get a heart piece, I think. Because I know if you throw a bomb into that big Goron vase thing there, uh, might be able to get one. So let's try it. And try out just picking up bombs. There we go. Very reminiscent of um, Mario, those bombs, I think. Missed. Let's try again. If we jump off and throw it. Ah! Damn. Maybe I should just go. <laughs> and just merci merc mercifully end this uh, this part of the playthrough. Oh, I don't know. I, I want to do it now. I'm determined. <sighs> Come on. Third time's a charm. Oh, come on. <sighs> Fuck that noise. Let's just get on with it. Let's go blow up the Dongo's cavern. Or the entrance, at least. <laughs> I'm wondering if there's another way that you do it. Oh, I've forgotten. I don't know. Just leave it for now. So yeah, um, I mean, I'll, I'll get inside the Dargo's cabin, that's where we'll leave it, but uh, thank you for watching if you have, um, please leave a comment if you've watched it this far, I mean, if you spent uh, <laughs> this long watching it, then uh, spend another minute or so leaving a comment telling me what you think. Um, oh, bugger. Ah! Throw it! Ah. Annoying. So yeah, leave a comment on what you think of this video. Um, go on. Boom. There we go. Uh, yeah, tell me yeah, what you think. You know, uh, Should I continue um, getting the gold skull to us? Should I go on all the side quests? Should I 100% this game? Or should I just do the story? Well, let me know. Those hearts are much needed. Right then. Hope you're gonna appreciate this, you big fat girl. Doing this for you, buddy. Oh, now we can enter the cow. Oh. <laughs> I kind of remember the accent I did. It was like a kind of a kind of black voice, I guess. <laughs> and of course, the entrance is sealed, but we can now pick up bombs and blow shit up. And I'm sorry that this whole part is not even featured in the dungeon or anything really that productive. It's just kind of progressed the story a little bit. And now we're back into the meat of the game. In Dodongo's Cavern. So I hope you'll join me with part 3 where we'll tackle this dungeon. And beyond. Thank you for watching. Catch you next time. It really is cavernous. Thank you.